This is our Richard back at you guys. We got Raphael's 86 model Chevy truck in the house. Short bed, really nice truck. This guy's uh, restoring it. Got a lot of nice parts underneath of it and stuff and a digital dash and all kinds of pretty cool stuff. It's got a 350 motor in it. Sounds pretty radical. Sounds really radical, really, doesn't it, Cody? Yeah, it yeah. sounds pretty good. Pretty good. But here we got a 700 transmission. Looks like it's uh, probably been rebuilt by the dealer before. It had like a little stamp on it here. It usually sits right here. It's not there right now. It's got some type of converter in it aftermarket too. So that tells me it's pretty much been rebuilt by somebody anyways. Converter hub looks pretty rough. It looks like it's been in there for quite a while actually. Fluid don't look too good. The old pump stator right here, you can see it, it's it's almost stripped completely out. You can see there, we have to put a pump in this thing, probably a stator. Have to look at it on and see what it looks like. So, pretty nasty, so it's been in there for quite a while, actually. Or it's been setting for quite a while, how's that sound? Yeah. What do we got there? Huh. A little different. A little eight millimeter bolt holds the speedometer uh, assembly in with your ground cable. Now these here you want to let mainly look uh, for wear down here on the end uh, where the seal pinches it. See what type of seal he's got in here. Uh, he just stacked it with two steels. You can do that, and it's got a little wire ring right here that holds them in. But normally, it's just, there's just one seal in there. So pretty simple. It's a beautiful Monday, huh, Cody? Yeah. We are fixing to get rain, snow, sleet, hail and tornadoes and 70 mile an hour wind all here in about an hour. <coughs> so we got some pretty crazy weather coming through here. <coughs> so I didn't even pull the pan off this. The pan already had a drain plug in it. So we're gonna really get to see what's really in there. Of course you can see here we have a lot of burnt material just set down here in the housing. Housing. If you look here, even the, if you look at the tail housing bushing, you can see it's brass all the way down into brass right here on this side. It helps with the flashlight here. And you got your coating here, and then it's back to brass. So we definitely got some bushing wear going on here. Uh, Anytime you have bushing wear in the back of the transmission on one of these, especially the case bushing and the tail housing bushing at the same time, you're going to get the shaft setting down low on the governor gear. If you look here, the governor gear, the plastic gear is underneath the main shaft. So if you get wear in the bushing here and the wear in the tail housing, this shaft sets down on top of this gear and breaks it off. So if you get a 700 in here and the gear broke off, that's why. If you put a new gear in here, it's going to do the same thing. It's going to break it off because the shaft set on top of it. Now you can see the distance this gear moves back and forth. That's very excessive. You can come in here and tap on the end of this cover right here and uh, tap it in and tighten this gear up. You just barely want it moving. You don't want it moving that far. That's just way too much. So a pretty simple way to adjust that. You want to grab this gear and try to turn it, make sure it doesn't wobble. You also want to grab this piece and make sure it's not wobbling on here. Make sure it's really tight. Now, your cap, you can see where it touches here, the, the little shiny spot on this little nub. You can take and tap this in and just slowly move that governor gear in where it doesn't rock back and forth and knock the cover off. So it's pretty simple. But when you get done, you want to clean it up, make sure this valve in the center moves up and down like that so put a new gear on there of 
course you have your speedometer gear here your inner one don't try this at home most of the time you'll break the gear I've just been doing it a long time and I kind of got an idea about how to get it off there but you, this little tab right here holds the gear on it's got these two little fingers that hooks on this side of the gear you got this little tab that goes in the shaft right here in the hole now we do have dual holes here too so you want to make sure you get it in the right one I always put it in this one right here the one towards the rear you can put it here but it'll get the gear off center from here you'll move this gear too far this way it'll be like that instead of being in the center so I don't know why they put two holes on here truthfully I, I haven't figured that out but if you look here we've got a bolt and a nut coming through the case so we probably got a stripped area through here where we're gonna have to put a Healy coil you can see the bolt it's got a nut on it here so Now this thing does sound really good. Motor has a really good sounding cam in it and stuff. So we're definitely going to put some really nice pieces in here. It's already got a Corvette servo in it. So somebody has been in here before. See there it's got the small bodied servo compared to a bigger body style this is a factory 4060e style here the 700 actually is bigger than that it's got a bigger bigger one in it but even though it's a corvette servo uh you always want to check for pin wear these things are really bad about wearing the pin uh, inside here where it slides back or up and down in here so just because you got one in there don't mean it's good This does have an aftermarket mount on it. You can tell by color. It's got a neoprene style mount. When you buy this mount, it comes with the washers and this plate on the bottom too. It comes in one package. A lot of times we get them mounts on there. We seems like they bring out vibrations and stuff like that. So it's pretty hard to say. You see this here, Cody? It's got that nut right there. Kind of a pretty color. Be nice when it's cleaned up. It's not chrome, but really lightweight. Pretty light, like a tinfoil almost. <coughs> Excuse me. Of course, we have a 700 filter, 4L60 style filter. Not 4L60E, but 4L60 filter. 4L60 and 700 take this type of filter and have a rubber seal on it that'll set down in the pump 4L60Es they added put the seal in the pump and not on the filter this thing's really nasty I don't know what they got in there you smell that additive Cody that smell they got perky stout and we have our detent linkage here here come over here Cody when you push on the gas pedal you're pushing your detent valve inward let off the gas it comes back so you're going to hit passing gear you're going to push it down it's going to push this valve all the way back let off the gas it comes back that's called tv pressure so uh, anytime if you're sitting there even uh idling in in park and you got a gauge on if you grab that tv cable up on the carburetor and you pull on it you're going to see pressure rise on the gauge so you always want to hook that up probably. <laughs> Now,
Now some of them will have a pin on them. See this little pin right here? Some of them won't. Uh, the ones that have a pin on them will have a check ball that sets right here. Uh, then uh, when you give it gas, it lifts the, the check ball up. So what I do is the check ball is not necessary. I just leave the check ball out. That way, uh, it, when I worked at other shops, we'd pull cars in and out so you never know what tranny you're putting back in the car. So you, I just leave the check ball out and you don't have to worry about what linkage you put on there. Because if you put a check ball in here and you put a linkage on it that has no pin, then the tranny's not going to work. Very simple. Right, Cody? Yes, sir. That's what I was doing. <laughs> so, now we do have on this uh, forward feed tube here, they have a bracket right here. There should be a bracket right here to hold this tube down inside right here. You can see how it's trying to come out. You can see there's a gap underneath of it. So normally there should be a little U-shaped piece under here like this. It sets on this ledge and this bolt holds it down in there. As you can see there, it's just almost popped out. That'd be a no-no. Pan looks really bad though, this thing. I, I'm glad I can't smell it. <coughs> Yes, sir. Now this has some type of aftermarket uh, vacuum control kit on it uh, for the torque converter to lock up in fourth gear. And what they do is, this is your main lockup solenoid here. And what they do is they put a ground uh, switch right here to when it goes into fourth gear uh, that grounds the, the ground wire and you have a key on power. That way when you turn the key off, it loses power going to the tranny. But anytime you go into fourth gear, this solenoid grounds locks the torque converter up. Now this will not lock up in third gear. So it's only going to be fourth gear only. Your detent spring and bolt. I don't know if this tranny was working fine until he put his performance motor in there and it just killed the tranny or didn't have it adjusted properly or, or what's going down here. It does have a shift kit in it. I can see that already. Uh, we have a TV valve here. You can't see down in there. There's too much fluid and dirt. But just by your plate here, you can see some modifications done here where they've got a plug here. Uh, this hole has been plugged. You drill this, uh, plug this one here, you can see it's been plugged too. Different places, then we drill different holes to make it shift firmer. But just by looking at the plate, you can tell it's aftermarket. Anytime I put these in here, they, they don't even clean it up. They just left this big old ledge right on here. If the valve body catches on that or sets on that, it's going to hold the valve body and you're going to have cross leaks like crazy. Another one right here. Same way, so... Of course, we have our intermediate accumulator here. You always want to scotch bite this up, put a new one in, new piston in here. I always try to stack my pistons where the spring sets level to the, bo the, the bottom of the accumulator. So in other words, when I put this in there, I want my spring to be level. If I have to space my piston up from the bottom, put a washer or something up here to lift the piston up, that's fine. But I definitely want to get this spring up to the flush here. That's a pretty weak spring for an intermediate spring, but I don't see that being a shift kit spring. Now we have our forward accumulator here. Like I said, this bolt here should have had a little tab on it to hold this tube in. But it's missed, and I'll go find one and put it in there. Now, also, here's a check ball right here that goes in here like that. Now, some of them have a little three tabs stick out that holds the check ball in there where it won't fall out and you won't lose it. But some of them don't. It'll just fall out. So you got to make sure you put it back in there. Check 
check ball locations on these things, guys. You got to be really careful since we're plugging holes. You notice, uh, let me do it this way. You notice we plugged a hole here in a trough. And if you flip it over, we plugged a hole right here in the trough too. You can't see that very good. You can see that. And what they did that for is to match the plate to the valve body. Because you have right here in this valve body, you'll have two holes. You'll have one here, one here. So what they did is they matched his plate to the tile valve body they had because this valve body plate is universal to fit both valve bodies. So you have to do that. Well, your fourth gear accumulator spring here. Well, I'd say we always block that and get rid of that. Dual, just put two pistons on top, stack them, and just block it where it don't even exist. Uh, check balls right here. You got one here, you got one here, you got one in this trough here, and you got one here. Now, this is the one that's going to be missing that I tell you that I always leave out. No matter what, on every tranny, I leave it out. <coughs> we'll get our park linkage off. Now this uh, detent linkage here is different uh, from your 4L60Es. 4L60Es are a lot shorter. These are longer. They make two versions of this too. They make a bad version and a good version. And this is the good version because it's, it uh, is held on by a hoop, I guess you could say, where the older versions has a little clip that clips over and the clip always breaks and then your linkage falls off here. So. You can see our nice bolt sticking out here. Just have to go through here and look at all of our holes and go ahead and get uh, Healy coils put in them uh, before we put the washer in the case. There's a Healy coil there, there's a Healy coil there, one there already, one there already. Quite a few already in there. Actually, I did one the other day. I think I put a Healy coil in almost every <coughs> one. I think half of them were already Healy coiled, and I ended up Healy coiling the rest of them. So. These old 4L60 pumps like this with auxiliary accumulators are getting very hard to come by. So my parts guy always laughs at me. But it's hard not to take these jobs in because they're still out there. Somebody needs to get on the ball and make us some pumps. Too good of a tranny to let it go by the wayside. So. Your normal 700 pump won't have this feed hole right here for the tube. Your early 700s and stuff like that. When they went to the 4L60 and added the forward accumulator, that's when they added that hole right there. Now, this is a big shaft style. Uh, you can see here where the stator's got a lot of wear. Which I got brand new stators in the box over there that we can put right in here. So no big deal there. As long as your pump body still feels really good. Stuff like that, make sure your boost valve bore ain't wore out, stuff like that. Now, we are going to upgrade this to a 13 vein pump. You can see right there, it's just a 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 vein. So we'll get rid of that and put a really nice rotor kit in here. Dual spring slide. I say we got a kit that comes with every bit of this right here in one box, so makes it really nice. And then your pivot pin right here for your slide. You always want to check it for wear. So we replaced almost all of them too, and your little spring. Definitely want to check it for wear here. Looks good. Scotch fried it up. Now you have an early and late model pump gasket right here too. Your 700 does not have 
this. Your later versions, your 4060s and your 4060Es and up have this, but your early 700s does not. And we don't, this gasket here will retro back, but I always try to just keep them the right way. We got a wide, or excuse me, a narrow band. It's got the good material on it that we like to use, but it's still it's just a narrow band. Drum looks pretty nice. You just want to check it in three spots for any type of warpage in the middle, any type of bowing, ceiling ring wear. Now on these trannies here, you got to watch too, uh, and that's this hole size right here in this drum. Some of them, this is a square hole right here, big hole. Where they make a small round hole drum too that's about the size of this screwdriver right here so you got to be careful if you got a square hole here you better put if you got to replace the drum you better put it back the same way reverse clutch let's say you can tell kind of tell this unit's been in before just by these clutches the way the clutches look how much more wears on this one and not the others? Like this was an oddball put in there. Kind of mismatched. Or you could have had a, used, a new one and the other three used or something. Who knows? So your ceiling rings here. Probably saw them. And so you can get in here and air check this stuff. Real simple. Got you a nice air tip on here. Now we're going to hit our three, four clutch first, and you'll see it there in the bottom. Uh -uh. It's burned up, look. It won't even push on it. I'd say that's wore out, don't you, Cody? <laughs> now if you go to the other one, I believe it's the forward. Let me turn it. Oh, wait. that thing's got problems. Yeah, it, it's all leaked up through there. It's got cut seals and all kinds of stuff in here. So this this should have bonded pistons, I would think. So I'm kind of sh shocked that it's leaking that bad. There's your three, four clutches. This is stock kit, but you notice your load springs are gone. Not even any springs in here at all. So we well, you know that's a no-no, so we'll definitely Put a Z pack in here, some load springs. Woo! Man, I didn't realize I was going to see this. So, this thing quit moving a long time ago. And anytime you see this, this uh, manual low clutch come on, this engine brake clutch burn up like this, that means they had it manual low trying to force it to move forward and this little clutch here just took it out. You can see your forward clutches are smoked too. See all these, yeah see it's aluminum pistons. Normally this tranny would have a bonded piston in it. It, it, it varies too, you know you just never know but normally they do. Real early style hardened uh, drum seal. You gotta, you gotta remember they changed this seal up here because they changed the, the lube hole right here in the back. Not this big one, but there's one right down here they changed. So when they moved it, they changed the seal. So you gotta be really careful. Let's see if I can take this out really quick, Cody. So we got all kinds of clouds outside this morning and we got some stuff supposed to happen tonight before we get off work I think Cody don't we I believe so. yeah we're not even gonna make it home I had a friend come in earlier and he said it was raining really hard on the other side of town okay well these are our seals this is our piston down here on the bottom There's no seal left on that at all. 
The inner one's still good, but the outer one's totally gone. There's nothing left on it. Huh? Wow. So that's cut. When we get over here, I would think we'd probably see some more cut or melted or something in here. Wow. I bet I've seen it. Oh, look at that. It, blew, it cracked that piston, too. All the way through. Look at that. Oh, oh gosh. Huh, look, let me take this apart. I like destruction like everybody else does. See your forward piston? Cracked all the way over there. I can almost take Oh, there it goes. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty there simple. Go. There we go. So that's that there, guys. This one here. So the seal's still there. This seal's still there. So we still want to look at the piston. Doesn't mean that it's bad just because it's dirty. You clean that up, shake the ball, make sure it seals good. Uh, of course, we have one more seal down in here. I wonder if it's there. The old green seal. Let me get that out of there. Yep, it's still one piece. That's about it. But look at that nasty in there. All oh, that's got to come out and be cleaned. Check it really good. You want to check this bearing here really good too, guys. So, I'd say this thing has had some, a few problems. I thought I'd seen something down in there, but we always got to check these gears on both sides for any type of pitting, chipping, or anything like that. If I can find my snap ring. Some of them things do not want to come off. I say we switch all of our hubs over to roller bearings and get rid of this thrust washer right here. The shell's already starting to strip too, so we'll put a hardened shell in here. We definitely get rid of the thrust washer and put a roller bearing in there. You look at the planet really good. So you just never know anymore. I say being built twice, uh, you just never know how they're put back together. So we see a lot of pretty rough stuff. A lot of rough stuff. Now, Ben, I'm not sure how much performance driving he's going to be using this. I'll probably call him and talk to him on, on how he's going to be driving and stuff to so see if we're going to be leaving this wave out or anything like that. But, you know, the engine brake clutch was burned up, but that's probably because uh, it was slipping and stuff like that, and he's just trying to force it to go. So, But on our sun gear, you want to look at it too really good. We replaced 90% of these. Now, you can see here somebody already modified it. Kind of some old school stuff that we, we used to do in the, in the day. We'd come in here and put four cuts across here. Uh, that way it lets oil, this sets down on that bearing. All your oil pressure is locked inside, so it lets it squirt it out here, and it puts more oil into this planetary by squirting it in these four holes, these slots right here they grinded with a whiz wheel. So, but you definitely want to check the planets, any wobbling. Anything like that. Check that main bearing down in here. Like I said, I'm not sure how many miles on it because he's changed the dash to a digital dash. So there's really no telling. But on these right here, there's not very many places to set the clearance on these. Uh, there's only like four different uh, sizes of uh, in-plate clearance washers under here. 
So you ain't got much selective right there. So when I put this back together, I'll put about a 10 to 15,000 spacer shim under here right off the bat before I set this down in there, lift everything to the top. Then I'll do an in play check on it once I set the pump down in there and see if I need to move it any further. But a lot of times I can just add 10 to it and be pretty close. So, but here we go, guys. 4L60, huh, Cody? Not too bad. Not too bad at all. Not too bad, Not but it, uh, another four or five hour build, easy for sure, but we got a lot of nice parts to put back in it. So, hey guys, don't forget to subscribe, push that notification bell, because definitely got a lot more to go. And Cody, thanks for recording, buddy. Yes, sir. Have a good day.